The judge, who is presiding over Donald Trump's criminal trial, said what you see on the screen. Words maybe Donald Trump never wanted to hear, let alone hear while he was stuck sitting silently obeying the rules in court as a defendant. Quote, this trial is starting. We can tell you they have the full jury. They have all the alternates. They are fully impaneled. They are raring to go. And it's gone down faster than expected. Four full court days was all it took to get the full jury going. And that means these opening statements begin Monday. Donald Trump's efforts to delay in this case have failed. And I've told you in other cases, those efforts have worked. So you never really know with all the lawyers and all the money and all the tricks of the trade and his large following what's going to happen. Well, tonight we can tell you something we couldn't tell you at the start of the week. All delay requests rejected. All delay tactics failed. Prosecution and defense will now clash. They will lay out their vision in front of this jury and to the extent the nation and the world watching starting Monday about whether Donald Trump is innocent, as he is legally presumed, whether all of this has sort of just been cooked up against him in ways that ultimately cannot be proven beyond a reasonable doubt to that jury. That's what the defense will say, something to that effect, or whether he is guilty for this scheme. Late today, we also saw a pretty dramatic demonstration of how this is going to work, because so far it's all been questioning juror, the juror candidates and the defendant sits there. But when we get into witnesses and other things, there's a lot more action that's going to happen. And Donald Trump's going to hear things he's not going to like. He's going to be accused of being a felon, among other things. Also, aspects of his personal life will definitely be discussed for days on end. And he will have to deal with it silently, quietly, and compliantly like any other defendant. I say that by way of introduction to this moment today because the proceedings were winding down. And best we can tell from reporters in the room, the defendant, Trump, may have genuinely thought things were done. And he tried to rise before court was officially adjourned. And if you've ever watched a courtroom drama, you know they take all the rules, small and large, pretty seriously. There's a sort of decorum and rule book. There's a bailiff who's armed to make sure nobody goes awry. And the judge, as The New York Times reported, told this defendant, Trump, sir, can you please have a seat? Because he had risen before court adjourned. After the judge leaves, leaves the chambers, of course, because the judge is in charge, the judge is the senior official in the room, not anyone else, not certainly the criminal defendant. Doesn't matter if he used to have a government job, in this case, even the number one job in the federal government. Only after the judge leaves the chambers did defendant Trump and others get up and leave, because that's the only time they're allowed to. Now, as for this full jury panel, I can tell you we've got 12 New Yorkers who will be deciding the fate of this defendant. They are currently anonymous. Five women and seven men, six alternates, which are a group of five women and one man. Now, Trump has a pretty packed schedule next week, owing to the many different things he's done and has been caught doing over the past years. Consider that Monday will be opening statements in this trial about hush money and possible campaign crimes. There will also be a hearing about his bond in the case where he was basically found liable for massive civil fraud in New York. Tuesday, there's a separate hearing about the gag order. Remember and I mentioned a moment ago about delay tactics? Donald Trump may have hoped to tie this judge up for days debating gag order issues this week. That didn't happen. The judge set this plan in motion to basically say, you may have violated it more than once. We'll deal with that next week. But first, we're going to pick this jury. So that, you see, is another busy day Tuesday for him. Then Thursday, the Supreme Court will be holding oral arguments on the most important, probably most grave case against Trump, the Jack Smith January 6th insurrection coup-related case, and whether Donald Trump has any sort of immunity for anything he might have done while he was president, the Supreme Court hearing that Thursday. So Monday is a new phase in the New York trial. Prosecutors will be able to begin laying out their case to the jury. And day one of a trial is not unlike day one of a job or day one of any other interaction where you meet a bunch of new people. Both sides, the prosecution and the defense, will be in effect meeting these jurors who have the final say. So it's way more important than day 10 or 20, even though later in the trial you have important witness evidence and at the end you have closing arguments, which is your chance to tell the folks something right before they go in to deliberate. But opening statements, these few, first few days are going to be big. And prosecutors have a case that they think will captivate this jury. We learned a bit about this jury during the question. We learned a lot of these people say they don't follow the news that regularly. Some said they weren't even familiar with which cases Donald Trump was facing. So they're going to say to these folks, the man in this room, paid these hush money payments. They can prove that. And he paid them to Stormy Daniels, who you may or may not remember, back in 16. 
And they're going to charge that after doing that, he falsified business records intentionally and knowingly. Not that somehow something got written down wrong, but this man, this defendant that the jury's looking at, he did it. And he did it for a reason. They're going to say something along the lines of, and I know this because I've read the indictment and a good opening statement is going to work off the indictment. They're going to say he did it to lie to you, to orchestrate a scheme, to influence the 2016 presidential election. That means every voter in America, including the New York voters who are jurors, to purchase this negative information and then to very specifically mischaracterize that for other crimes, taxes, campaign finance, all of that designed to hide the true nature of the payments. And if this is anything like other financial cases that we've seen, you might hear prosecutors say things like, you wouldn't get away with this. You might have just filed your taxes recently. You might worry about those kind of things. And even if you make an honest mistake on your taxes, you got to go back, admit it, fix it, and pay up. And this person here, this defendant, thinks they can get away with all of that. That's the kind of stuff we're going to hear on the prosecution side. And while the mischaracterization stuff, the business fraud, isn't itself a felony, as I've told you, the DA will have to sooner or later try to explain the legal theory here that what was a misdemeanor becomes a felony under New York law, which the DA didn't write. That's just the law of the land because of that other criminal intent, that it's combined into this damning evidence of a larger crime and that there are more than one set of crimes to choose from. There's election law. I mentioned that. There's tax law. There are parts of New York penal law. And in a twist, Michael Cohen, who they will almost certainly hear from this jury, Michael Cohen went to federal prison for the last highlight you see on their federal election campaign law. So this DA and his prosecutors will argue that all of this is clear as day, is proven, basically, because they have so much record evidence. And in the opening argument, they will probably strike a pretty confident tone the way they did in the indictment, saying it's not complicated, it's all corroborated, and they even have the defendant on tape. And that Trump knew it was a big deal because he, when asked about it, first lied and blamed Michael Cohen. The no was a lie. You'll have to ask. Michael tells you where Donald Trump's mind frame was. There are a mil million different ways that people, especially him, but many politicians can avoid or dismiss things. But he was still stuck to his blame Michael Cohen defense, basically. So ask him. It was all him. Maybe he went rogue, which is where they eventually got to. Uh, but quickly, other lawyers had to come in and start changing the story. We don't know what out-of-court evidence they'll be using, but they are going to take different parts of the timeline, the prosecutors, to show how the story shifted, which, in essence, is another way that you know it was a cover-up. Because you had the original thing, they covered it up, and then, in a sense, they started covering up the cover-up. Then Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani basically went on live TV, changed the story, and admitted or said Trump did repay Cohen. They funneled it through the law firm. Funnel through the law firm, and the president repaid it. Oh, I didn't know he did. Yeah. There's no campaign finance law. Zero. Zero campaign finance law, says the now indicted Rudy Giuliani. He, like Michael Cohen, was indicted for crimes allegedly done on behalf of Donald Trump. He is awaiting his own trial in Georgia. Cohen, of course, has gone through this process already. He pled guilty about the hush money and went to prison, and it did involve a federal campaign crime. Now, we know one juror who was selected this week said they are familiar with Michael Cohen from following on social media. Another juror said they also follow Kellyanne Conway. We are in a modern world. So they may remember a little bit about Cohen, but they're going to be instructed to only focus on the evidence admitted into trial. So they're going to hear things from Cohen that might echo what we've all learned in public, but it's got to be done through the cross-examination, under oath. But, of course, Cohen's been under oath before. He testified under oath to Congress about all of this. What I did each and every time is go straight into Mr. Trump's office and discuss the issue with him. He acknowledged to Allen that he was going to pay the 130000 and that Allen and I should go back to his office and figure out how to do it. You can expect consistent testimony to that end from Cohen before these jurors. 
The legal problems, of course, are adding up, and that's where this man who's chosen to run for president again, many people in this situation probably wouldn't even do that, is going to have to face some level of public exposure, scrutiny, and consequence, potentially, as people learn about all this stuff. Same way the January 6 hearings showed a lot of evidence to the public, which they then factored into their understanding of issues. But the jury is only going to be asked one thing. Across all these different legal problems, they're going to be asked to focus only on the evidence in New York. Prosecutors will be chipping away at this defendant, and they will be making these arguments. And you may notice that in this lead tonight, we focused a lot on the prosecution's case. We know more about it as a factual matter because we have the indictment. There's no requirement that the defense publish some big written thing in advance. The burden's on the prosecution, so we know more about it. But if you're thinking, well, hey, Ari, I've heard you say we got to have both sides to understand this case. We're going to be covering both sides throughout the trial and tonight. So later on tonight, we actually have a breakdown on the defense side. What you just heard was some of the damning evidence on the prosecution side, arguing that Donald Trump is a felon and that he committed a jailable felony. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone, you hit search on the bottom right corner, you type in MSNBC, you click on the MSNBC app, you click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.